on regular radio. All back. right, we're back. Back live. Giving each other shit. All kinds <laughs> on of on shit. On regularradio.com today. What was I? MC what? MC douchebag. MC douchebag. <laughs> MC douchebag. That's house. my rap name, MC douchebag. <laughs> that is Ian. Ian. <laughs> Ian. Hello. Yeah, what's Ian's MC name? That's what I want to um, know. Um, they call me EC. EC. I, I, I represent the East Side of Cambridge. Oh, there but, you uh, go. You know. Oh, but there you go. He really does. Too. Those mean streets. <laughs> He's serious. Those about mean that too. streets. Yeah, right. Watch out for that garment district. <laughs> <laughs> the garments will get you. <laughs> Damn, I'm excited that Ian's here in the studio. This is Me too. the one and only Carmelita's son. Yeah, let's hear it for that. And supposedly we danced in a, in a kitchen once when I was a toddler. That's, that's all I've heard. That was our, our, our former history. Um, but uh, it's good to have you here because you're coming all the way out from D.C. But uh, mm-hmm. had a good Thanksgiving, a good Massachusetts Homegrown Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's always good. It's always good to come back, you know, see uh, family and friends. Uh, it's no place like Boston, so yeah, I'm, I'm it, stoked to be back. And take them all out protesting with you too, as well. <laughs> Apparently, yeah, yeah. a little bit of that, you know. Uh, <laughs> my my mom's my mom's feisty. She she made me go out with her the other day up to uh, Salem to a Walmart to uh, join the picket line uh, in support of uh, worker solidarity, workers' rights, and uh, so it was a good experience. What uh, the so. Your mom brought you out, Kamala Leader. She wanted yeah. you to go. What did you think about it? What was the uh, event like? Um, well, first and foremost, uh, it, was, it was really well organized. And uh, so I definitely got to give a lot of credit to uh, a lot of the local unions um, and organizers, Jobs for Justice as well, uh, for, for uh, good communication and, and rounding everyone up. And it, it, we went to the, the location in Salem, but this wasn't just... Uh, there it was all over Massachusetts and the country, so um, it was it was well organized and there was a good turnout too. And um, I think it was a positive thing for for people who work at Walmart to realize that you know the community does have their back if they want to uh, take the fight to their company for better wages, better benefits, and and a better uh, working environment. And I think that the employees do want to do that. It just uh it's of course tough, they do. <laughs> yeah, of course they yeah. do. This is a tough working environment for anyone. To skip a day of work when you know this 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 company is like the way it is. Like, right, and was it, there was job. a big figure that was just uh, released over the past few days, and this is great that this has been getting some some media coverage. Finally, finally, and, and not enough, not enough, but still some. There's yeah. been some good articles, like on Gawker, they had a good article, and that's when they were talking about the uh, if if uh, they were able to raise everybody's income to twenty five thousand a year. All the workers there, it would only cost uh, customers an average of a, 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 an extra cent, right? Or an extra dollar, an extra dollar, an extra dollar on their purchase, uh, on their purchases per year would cover enough for them to have to, to lift all the all the workers working for Walmart out, this out of, is po- out of so poverty. So much money, like when you look at, uh, they have these listings of like the top employers in the world. And they're like in the top four. Like it's like you know, United States government. These asshole companies are saying that <laughs> the, they can't afford have, uh, uh, health care for the, their workers. You, you have China, and then you have like Walmart. Walmart's like number three. Like they 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 beat all the other countries. Like they employ so many people. They they have so much capital leverage. How can they not? Treat their employees well, and, and you know it, it's it, they, it's simple. It's greed. It's, yeah. it's they used greed. to have stock options. When when yeah. it seems like when the the old man owned the company, Sam Walton, that he did actually care about the employees. That 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 it was a company that gave people a leg up and opportunity. And today it seems like it's not that way. It's all about getting maximum revenue from all of these locations and all of this economic. Engine that they own, and, and you know what you know, adds to the to the to the issue is, uh, you know, they they send a lot of the the, the manufacturing jobs overseas, and uh, you know, there's no regulations there. There's nothing from keeping them paying, you know, workers in China two bucks a day, uh, you know, a couple meals a day, maybe maybe a, a shack out back. You know, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's 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 ridiculous. You know, um, and and so when you think about it, it's not just you know us here in America. It's 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 people abroad, and it's Absolutely. a real issue. You know, and uh, it's it's out of control, and uh, you know, to pull a profit isn't enough anymore. It has to. It's it's never enough for them, and and it's it's coming at the expense of the middle class here here in Massachusetts and elsewhere. So uh, you know, to take this fight to Walmart is is not only important but it's necessary, and. Uh, you know, I, I, I applaud Absolutely. I applaud all the, uh, the the organizers 
and the, the the brave employees of Walmart for standing up yeah. to their employer and yeah. demanding uh, a better better situation for themselves. And uh, what was the public response? I saw um, in some of the pictures that you were almost in like the intersection with the cars going by, and uh, you were also in front of the Walmart. What was the public's response? And were there any big confrontations? Um, surprisingly, there weren't any confrontations. I mean, that is a little surprising. It was <laughs> it was a little shocking, you know. Um, but overall, I uh, I found the the public to be really supportive of it. Um, a lot of people who were driving by uh, were aware of it, and they they honked their support. Um, a lot of people actually uh, that were turning in actually turned around and went somewhere else. Nice, that's so, amazing. That's fantastic. Yeah, it was. That's real. That's real. It was encouraging to say the least. Um, but it it it. This is just the beginning. This it doesn't end there. A few people turning away isn't right. going to change a thing. On one day, exactly. So you feel a little guilty. <laughs> I mean, right? Mm-hmm. But um, but but putting this um, putting this in the public's awareness and and getting people aware of the situation is the most important thing. Educating because unfortunately, for as many people that do know the injustices that are occurring, there's exponentially more that are unaware. And I think the most important thing is to educate. Uh, people as to the truth of the matter here. So while we did have a positive reaction from those in the Salem and the North Shore area, uh, you know, we got to keep going. And Absolutely. Forrespect.org is the, the website to get more info. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people that are unaware, and then there's a lot of people that, uh, because it's not visible day to day, they, they don't focus on it. They, they, you know, and I think it's it's important to remind people that are listening um, you know, not everyone can go out and march in a rally. You know, not everyone can go out and, and hold up a sign for a few hours. They don't have the time. They don't have the vehicle. They don't have whatever. That's fine. But you do make a choice with your dollars. No matter what, as a consumer, as a citizen, a.k.a. consumer, which is all that people see us as and, and we'll, you know, in the government and corporations and such. But, you know, you, you go out, you spend your money, and in doing so, you're basically, you're voting with your money uh, for for what that company stands for, and so if you don't like what that company stands for, don't go there. Don't vote with your money. Don't support it. You know, if even if you can't hold a sign, you can just choose. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna go somewhere else. I'm gonna spend a little bit more money, but I know that the workers at this place are treated fairly. I mean, it's that simple. Yep. And it, and it feels good. Yep. <laughs> you know, it feels better to do that. I mean, the, today is Small Business Saturday, and we got to give a shout out to that. Because yep. there's a lot of small businesses in Boston and around Boston, all over Massachusetts, that I, I hope are, are seeing some, uh, some, si- some significant sales today uh, because um, they deserve it. You know, these are the types of businesses that, that support local economies. That's the type, the type of businesses that pull us out of recessions. So, you know, we have to really support that and pay attention to where we're, we're spending, where we're putting our our paychecks you know yeah definitely important to, to reinvest in your local economy uh just these small businesses are our neighbors and our friends and if we yeah. don't we don't put they're us <laughs> yeah they're, they're they're where it's one another and uh if we don't if we don't support those then we're just you know allowing for large corporations uh like walmart to move in and push them out so uh, i would encourage everyone listening today to go out go to go to a record store you know go to a local clothes store you know go to a local market yep. uh, especially today mm-hmm. yep small business saturday it has its own website you can look up local stores if they, you may never have discovered before garment district go. my store. yeah there you my go store, that's that, where i shop that's because it's the only place you can afford clothes mike <laughs> at the dollar pound yeah. no i don't do that's dollar where he gets pound his, like, track suits. I, it, 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 it is like where I got my suit. Uh, for your my, suit? For my car. The one with the pinstripes? No, I got a brand new like suit at, for this job. Did that you I get got. the bow tie there too? No, no. It's a nice <laughs> suit. Like 20 bucks. Nice. Seriously, it was like unbelievable. That Can place I? is like... That's actually a good point, though. Buy secondhand exactly, shit. You know? you know, I just went. I got. A, I went to a consignment store in in Maynard because I was home. If it's dry cleaned, that's what, what I'm saying. Whatever, like, whatever. I like the buck a pound one. Is that dry cleaned? Oh God, no. no. Are you kidding me? But, but the watching. stuff yeah, upstairs yeah. at the no. garment district for like you know you get a suit jacket for ten bucks. Not bad. Yeah, I'm like, talking that about that shit is clean. Yeah, and that's but that's how that's how not to contribute to to messed mm-hmm. up systems. Like you know that's that's why I look so funky fabulous every day. <laughs> And I'm paying less money, and I'm taking waste out of 
are out of the world. You yeah. know, I'm taking away something they could have seriously, gone and filled a landfill. I spent like seriously. <laughs> I, I walked out of there with like under. I think it was like for everything for like 25 bucks, right? Yeah, not and a bad And the spot. manager when I got hired was like, "You're dressed to impress," because <laughs> it was all brand new. It looked like you know what I mean. It was like there you go. Look it's at like, that. Fucking Thank you, Garment District, for get, yeah. for helping Mike get a job here. And That's a good go. thing. <laughs> We're giving them a plug today. Can I? Yeah. Can I? Uh, can I actually give a shout out to uh, yeah. um, Store Fifty Four in Austin? A uh, good good friend of mine, Wayne, um, and Looney Tunes just moved in there too. Uh, awesome record store that's been in Boston for almost it's thirty right years. Right across from Stingray, right? No yeah, brands. right on Harvard Ave. Um, great spot. It's got secondhand clothes, uh, records. So I, I encourage everyone to check that spot out too. Really cool. That's awesome. Nice. Yeah, plugs for local businesses. If you have an awesome local business that you'd like to share with us, you should call in 617-606-4122. I just always fuck it up, no matter what. It's always behind me. I'll never, I, I you know. And you know me. <laughs> but if you have other, other businesses to support, I know my friends are going out in Worcester. I saw a nice post from one of my friends going out to like, she tagged three different local stores that she was going to. You can do that, you know. Brag about it. It's a good thing to brag about. Where you put your money matters. It really, really, really does. And some of us, we, can, we don't choose, can't choose some of the places we have to put our money. Like, I have to pay back student loans eventually, you know. But other than that, <laughs> I have some other, you know, my disposable income. I want it to go somewhere good, you know. Place like Boomerangs. That's another one. I'll shout out to Boomerangs. <laughs> They're a great used clothes store that I used to work for. And all of their, all of their stuff goes to AIDS Action. So you should go support cool. them today. I bet they're doing some nice sales too. Um, yeah, how you doing over there, Mike? Ah, we're <laughs> You're doing good. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready for you and Ian. I'm, yeah, I'm, I want to hear more from uh, Ian about uh, you. You know, you're here on. You know, well. What's Ian, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna we'll, <laughs> look at have, have we're this gonna mad go, now. Gonna we're gonna take a break. And then okay. we're gonna come back with some more Ian. We're gonna talk. We got. Uh, hopefully, we, I haven't even told Rob. We need to look for uh, Ian's band if we have it on the system. Oh. <laughs> it's, uh, I want to walk, hear it. walk the plank. Walk nice. the plank. Yeah, that's it. And Ian, Ian does hardcore music. He also does. He used to do hip hop. He still does hip hop. Still maybe, do it. Maybe we can get something going. I'm trying to work this out. Don't force it. I, I can't force, force it. it. I gotta be cool. Don't be cool, it. my can. Yeah, be cool. It's so hard. It's hard we'll see do. what we can work out. We're gonna do. <laughs> I got two songs from Walk the Plank. Which one should we play in? Which you got? We have no ears and nothing in common. Uh, no ears. Okay. All right. That's an old one, old school. But uh, yeah. Ready? It's psyched. Two hotheads or activism happens. This is no ears. by Walk the Plank. <laughs> Stay tuned. On regularradio.com. Back here on Two Hot Heads where activism happens, arguing over uh, local prices at some of our favorite local businesses. 
<laughs> but uh, <laughs> that was the type of that's the type of hardcore I like. That's yeah, what I was just but, telling Ian. That shit was awesome. Yeah. What was the name of the song? Tell us uh, the band again. Uh, so my band Walk the Plank. Uh, we're out of Washington D.C. Um, and uh, the song was called No Ears. It was off a split we put out in March with uh, with our friends Dead and Gone. Um, so yeah. Keep and that's you singing. Uh, yeah, believe it or not, I don't. Understand that's so how awesome that yeah. because that's my big gripe with like with hardcore is when it starts sounding like metal, like it has no like melody underneath it, and it's just kind of like growly and that that you have you have a voice as well as the growls, you know. I like that. I like that. I don't know if I'm explaining that right. I, I do. No, I think you are because that's what I like, I like too. You know, I if like it, it to have a little bit If it's just growl, I would get totally bored. <laughs> like I can't handle that. I shit. can't either. I can't. Although I can do it pretty well. I want to do it again at Falcon. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can get something going here. Yeah, we'll see. Well, we were also talking about how hip-hop and hardcore are so similar, which I think is really cool. I mean, that's that's like what I grew up listening to was, I mean, we have our parents were co-hosts of, of, of you know, punk radio show back in the day and all sorts of groundbreaking music and stuff. So we clearly both grew up with similar uh, similar tastes uh, at, at least from our, our parents passing that down to us, which is cool. So I grew up with a lot of punk and a lot of, um, you know, mostly, mostly, you know, punk garage rock and stuff like that. And now that I'm older, it's all like hip hop, but it's because it kind of echoes the same sentiments of that early punk music. It, 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 I, I consider uh, them to be very similar. They're both, uh, you know, the, the beginning of hip hop and the beginning of hardcore. It was uh, it was kids, you know, and they uh, they wanted their voice to be heard. And 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 to me, even to this day, both uh, <laughs> both real positive ways for uh, for for people all ages to uh, to get involved and 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 create a sense of community. Yeah. Um, we 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 we've got friends up here in Boston, New York, all over the place, and you know, as a band and just as a part of the the music community, we're real fortunate. So, um, to anyone listening, you know, you're sitting on your ass right now and you got nothing to do, go start a band, uh, go yeah. to a show. Um, actually, because that is activism. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> it I, really is. I want to take a, a quick second to uh, just uh, there, in case uh, anyone's uh, doesn't have any plans tonight. There's a, a really awesome show going on in Austin tonight. Uh, Brunt of it. Who I believe oh, played. Yeah, uh, I love Brunovic. Love Brunovic. Yeah, they're great guys. They're awesome guys. Uh, I love Empty Vessels from Connecticut, uh, good friends of ours, and a, f- a few other awesome bands um, are going to be playing a show in Alston tonight. Um, unfortunately, it's it's we're is putting one the, of those DIY venues. Yeah, yeah, which so, one? Which show? one? Uh, which one? Well, it's actually at a new spot. Um, it is. Don't say the location. Yeah, I'm not gonna say. No, you don't. You can't. He's not saying the location. Okay. He's saying the name. They the, have names. The name of the place is called the Rec Center. R W R E C K. Okay. Uh, it's a I new get spot. It. Um, so if you want the address, ask Punk, you know. We're um, teaching Mike how to be cool. Ask, ask, <laughs> a, ask a stranger on the street. Uh, I don't want to blow it up. You know, Menino's has it's a pension like, for fucking this stuff up. So. We'll be good. We'll be good. <laughs> no, it's Dave's true. Dave's on here, no, man. No, Dave's on here. No, it's true. I was gonna, I, I'm really glad you brought that up, though, because uh, we've had a few... <laughs> Uh, local DIY venues just get shut down. Uh, what or, we talk about? By, rest yeah. in peace. Oh. Yeah, what, what we talk wait, wait, about? What happened? What are you talking um, about? What? Tell the, me. the magic room. I oh, mean, yeah. the magic room got shut down by the cops. I don't know if it's coming. If it came back yet sure at this point, I don't know what's you know? going on. Yeah. The White House also. The one in JP White House and JP White House. Oh, the White House was, is for, gone. Those around forever. White House just got shut down. So all these DIY underground venues in Austin, JP, all these, you know, you know. Around around the area, that is such an amazing resource for new artists, for for you know teens, young adults, anybody mm. who's really trying to get into art or just listen. I mean, it's it's just an opportunity for people to perform and try shit out and and be accepted for it. It's fucking awesome, yeah. and it's getting taken away because right that's now. that's that's considered a, a, a primary threat to the city of Boston. Like how how does that make any sense? Oh, they don't have a license. Well, I think that you know, there's always been a lot of that. Going we can't on. make money off of them. Yeah. So therefore, I, I think that they shouldn't know. exist. So, so if you're gonna go to a show, uh, you know, respect the space and and let's try to preserve uh, the DIY spots, the DIY culture exactly. here in Boston and everywhere else. Uh, you just move to a new smart. location. That's what happens. Yeah, you but it's a, a lot of work. It's a lot of fucking work. It's a lot of work. It's like where you. these people live. I hear you. Yeah. They should, they should allow some permanent. They're losing their homes. They should basically tell you people, know? like, if you want to do this, you can. Like, seriously. 
Right. Regulate it. Tax and regulate. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I, I'm a libertarian. I'd say no, but, if, oh. you know, if that's the solution, I guess, you know, I mean, <laughs> I just, you know, I, I've seen, I've gone to these these house parties, these cellar, cellar parties cellar in Austin. Party. Everybody <laughs> knows about them, and then they're fucking awesome. I mean, you know. Yeah, and now they're getting shut down. Are well, you pissed? Get pissed. Mike, you're not know. pissed. You're looking too calm over We need more cellar this parties. This is Massachusetts. Yeah, we need more cellar parties. I mean, yeah, it's like... We'll, yeah, we'll we deal do. with it. But we're, we're partying in cellars yo, in Massachusetts. This, this is activism, man. This is really important, you know. And especially with punk, punk music and shit, because that's that's a type of music and hip hop that's always been associated with activism and 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 social change. Maybe not so anymore in a, in unfortunate cases, but uh, for the most part, that's it's talking about social change. It's talking about political activism. You know, that's the type of music that deals with those issues. And we're taking away the opportunities. For people to share that, that sucks. It all comes full yeah. circle. Fucking pisses me off so that we can have more Walmarts. Ah! More, we, <laughs> I'm going to start a punk band with you, Ian. I'm getting pissed. <laughs> Maybe that's what we'll do. What? <laughs> Walmart All-Stars is what it'll be called. Walmart All-Stars! <laughs> oh, yes! I love it. I'm down. I'm there. Wow. I'm there. Look what we're doing. I don't right know. There. We're two vocalists, Making though. We bo- we'd be divas. It wouldn't work. Maybe. Maybe it would. What instruments do you play? Um, I uh, played piano for a number of years when I was younger, um, so I was trained on that. Uh, I played guitar. I played bass in a band in high school, cool. very briefly. Um, but uh, I love being a front man. You know, it's yeah. like you know, like <laughs> it's the one time where you can like be a complete jackass, <laughs> and it's like thumbs up, dude. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It's just uh, it's it's fun and it's it's cool. You know, to get in, interactive with people and uh, you know just have fun. It's yeah. like the type of pleasure some people must get from playing football or something. Yeah. <laughs> my, my mom would never let me play football, and this is what she gets. Now I'm a front man. Yeah, I know, you know, get beat up. I know, I'm not just Carmelita. a front man, but a front man of a hardcore band. Like, we <laughs> went to the show, and I don't know. I, she was cool about it. She got scared, but I got really scared. Like, I, I swear <laughs> to God, I, I'm like afraid for you, Ian. <laughs> I mean, th- don't cry for me, Argentina. Yeah, yeah. I just He'll get afraid at the live fine. shows. I don't care, like, Big doing boy. the recordings, but the live shows. Oh, people... come on. That's what it's all about oh, is the live God. show. That's the only re- like, that's the reason oh. to be in a band. It's to play yeah, a live show, true. man. That's the reason. That's yeah. the reason to go see, mu- you know, be involved in music. But at the same time, you know. Oh, no. You, don't you, be nervous. You kill it. You kill it. I got to admit it. But, um, so, what, like, tell us about some of the uh, other activism and, and Groups that you've been involved in in the past, um, in Virginia or even. Well, I went to I went to college at George Mason University, and um, uh, a couple years back, I got involved with uh, SDS, which is Students for a Democratic okay. Society. Um, and there's numerous chapters across the United States at, at universities, and what that mainly deals with is student organizing um, issues at universities uh, and getting getting students involved in making active and sustainable changes at their uh, you know places of education so to speak um, and we had we had we had numerous success uh, at our campus we uh, we paved the way for uh, textbook rentals for students you know who can't afford to drop $500 yeah. a semester on books um, you know um, That's awesome and and just you know improvements to the dorms and other things like that that just helps students out. I mean, you know that the, the cost of an education puts most students and their families in debt for years to come. Yeah. So the very least that universities can do is provide for their students and you know and listen to what make sure the students are heard. Essentially, um, how did people in uh, the administration and the, and the university treat your group? Um, well, on a number of occasions, we, we, we stage a few direct actions, a few walk-ins and teach-ins um, of sorts. And, you know, they, they, they laughed at us. They laughed in our face. Um, they said, well, you're just a bunch of kids. You know, what are you, you going to do? You know? And, uh, you know, we kept doing what we were doing. We got students involved. We were out there every day knocking on doors, uh, tabling, handing out flyers, and just kind of fostering a sense of of community amongst the students uh, and it's, this is a university of 35,000 so um, you know we were we just stuck with what we were doing and it got to a point where you know students were asking why why don't we have this or why is this the way it is and they really started questioning it and uh, you know people talk and and you know a semester later a couple semesters down the line you know 
these changes are implemented, but they won't acknowledge. Yeah. They won't say, well, where it came from. Th- you know, thanks SDS and thanks students for. They'll just be like, this is all. But idea. you know where it came from. It's it's yeah. the question is in a few years will they? That's an interesting. It's mm-hmm. it's cool because I did a lot of the similar stuff in in college as well. We had a strike where we actually went our whole you know. A student body went on strike awesome. for for a, a list of demands that we had. One of which I can ha- I had some responsibility in putting on the list was getting the cops out of the dorms. Yeah, they, un- you know, plain clothes police patrols yep. out of the dorm room. How do you man? Uh, they had pizza. They were like posing like a pizza delivery guy. Uh-huh. Getting the door open, busting you for bongs, busting you yep. for beer if you're underage, weed. Yeah. Pipes, whatever they could yep. find. Yep. That is why That's all serious. cops are bastards, my friend. <laughs> it's fucked up. It's crazy. But yeah, so we were doing that, and um, you know, and it, and and at first, like I was in all those those planning meetings and stuff, and the the administration did not take us seriously. They didn't think we were gonna get more than a few hundred people, and we got like multiple thousand people, nice. like maybe four thousand people that that didn't go to didn't go to classes that day and teachers that were in solidarity with us that didn't, you know, and we got on the news and it was like all this stuff. And then afterwards, so because of that publicity that we got, you know, they were forced to kind of make some some changes, some of them token changes, some of them like realist, you know, actual, actual, um, you know, had an actual impact. They got the cops out of the stuff. dorms, though. But didn't they? well, yeah, they did. They got rid of the guy that was putting the cops in the dorms. Yeah, okay. We and we outsted him. We got rid of him. Boom. So that was um, that was a huge success from that end. But of course, it was never given credit. You know, they were never yeah. saying like, oh, because of the student strike, we now send uh, buses of students to lobby for. Uh, in, in you know increases to funding in higher education every every year they have to pay for for this lobby day for students and stuff like that those are some of the tangible outcomes of this and they never say oh this is because our students went on strike and it's a little bit of a problem though because after you go on strike you have all this momentum and then they give you these little token like you know solutions and you think oh well we need to say that we've we've won or we've accomplished something so how do we keep going from there yeah and you know it's, it's hard it's cool that you uh you mentioned that the aspect of of, of collective bargaining and the issue um yeah. i know over the past couple of years um the right to collectively bargain in this country has come under fire yeah. um and so another reason that uh student organizing and activism is important it it it, uh, it kind of it shows a lot of young people that you know, collective bargaining isn't a privilege; it's a right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if 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 we exercise that at a, an, a university level, um, it it get, reinforces the right to uh, execute that and, and perform it at a professional level with the, the unions or other groups yeah, uh, the, exactly. for the workers. Um, so I think that yeah. across the board, um, it's just it's so important to stay active in in one's community, whether it be university or or another entity. It's so important. That's such a good point that you bring up that that's how we learn how to be, you know, how to be organizers for a lot of us comes in college and how awesome it is to learn those skills, but that we have to continue them, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, not there. just use them in the microcosm of college, mm. but, you know, bring them out into the real world. Yeah, it's, it's something you, 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 there's... And you've been doing it. That's what's fucking awesome. I, I, I you know, I would say mo- more credit goes to, to the, the people, you know, all the students that we worked with for, for, for caring, you know. Right. I feel like it's my the responsibility that they, mostly. But that's the thing. They yeah. felt like because, you know, that they actually, yeah. that they could make a difference, you know? Because that's the thing. We, we you know, our culture, the, the type of culture that we hate is, is one that breeds on apathy and the idea that whatever you do isn't going to make a difference. But if you look at these types of local actions, if you look, that are tied into what's going on nationally, like the Black Friday uh, boycotts, and that's the worst. But um, because of that, you you see that this is happening. All, this is connected to things that are happening all over the country, and that what you do locally, right next door, can make a difference on that type of a stage. And I, I got one more thing I to say. I, I'm talking my ass off. I know. Uh, is I uh, most credit actually goes to my mom because when I was a little kid, uh, she dragged me to a lot of meetings, and you know she took part in community activism with uh, jobs jobs with justice. So. You know, ultimate credit goes to her because uh, you know, without uh, her her lead, I don't think uh, I don't think I'd be able to do it now, or I wouldn't I wouldn't maybe I wouldn't want to. I don't know. You, you know, know how good you are. That was my last question. That's so. <laughs> what about perfect. your mom? I was gonna uh, say too. And so I mean, she dropped me off here too. Thanks. That's perfect. <laughs> thank oh, you, Ian, so for coming good. in, and uh, thank you, Kamalita. And um, the, if we're gonna do anything, it's now or never because we gotta we gotta say goodbye to Ian. He, Ian's off to a punk show. Uh, I, I think I'm gonna meet him there. That sounds yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to a seller seller show, man. A seller, seller show. a seller show down cellar. Cellar down cellar. You get some seltzer. 
Do we have any beats? Can we put a beat on? Oh, bro, bro. Can I make this happen? Come on. What do we have, Rob? Do we have some music? Is this all right? No, not good enough. That's good. You can use this. Do we have a topic? What the show? What we're doing? What do you want to look at? Oh, I got really bad cop mouth. Let me see that. Oh, drink. I think it's all nice. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right, my mouth is dry from like too many joints So the EC on the radio, hope y'all catch my point Cause I go into Austin to the cellar door show EC, yo, I just have to drop it through the dough He got me on the spot, so I'm just spitting Yo, I'm brilliant, man, it is never written With the pen or the pencil, you can get the stencil Up on the wall, and you know how I ball You damn put me on the spot for three years straight God damn, <laughs> you think I relate, so it's all good I'ma pass the mic me. No her. Oh, yo, my name is H Mac. I'm straight rocking it here with my boys, and we doing it. We talking it. We talk, talk, talking all afternoon. Shit, put me on the spot here too. Well, I'm in the room in the zoom, zoom, zooming. Got my boy Ian, he crew, crew, crewing. Never met him before except when I was smooting, zoot, zooting, straight tooting. I don't know, but I keep going around and around. Straight showing, I got the two hot head rock block and yacht you cocks and much fuck cock. Yeah. All right, that's enough. Two hot heads. MCDB. Oh, MC Deuce Come back, come back. Not my best. DB, later. Two hot heads. We'll be back. Yeah, we will. Completely uncensored radio on regular radio. Yeah!